Hello everyone and welcome to this video on integrating Power BI with other applications. I am Tim Weinzaffel and this is episode 14 and in this episode I am going to show how you can show or hide a Power App that has been embedded in your report. Now on my two prior uh, episodes I actually showed how you can embed a Power BI report and also integrate that with your um, your report specifically. Um, I'll put a link right here. If you did not catch that, make sure to catch that because I'm not going to go into actually setting that up. But what I want to do is show how you can actually um, you know, hide that Power App, um, embedded Power App when you don't want it. Let's jump over to the report here and let me give you an example. So here is the um, report that I had previously created. And you'll see here I have an embedded Power App on the right. Now the purpose of this app is so that one can edit comments. So if, you, if I see here, I got this comments and I can select on one. You'll notice right now I don't have any record selected and it says you must select a specific record. And I set that up specifically and I walk through um, how I did that in my previous videos. But if I go ahead and select this one, so let's say I select this, this project, you'll see the app is now enabled. And I can go ahead and I can either add to this comment or I um, and edit this record uh, and so on. And that's the benefit of having this embedded app. It allows me to actually inter uh, interact with some of the data. Uh, and in my case, I'm using this to um, add or edit comments on this list of data. Now, let's just say I don't actually want to show the app. It is taking up some space. Now, in this case, it's not a big deal. But let's say I really wanted to add more columns to this table. I don't want to have scrolling and I really want to span the width of this table all the way across uh, my, my report. And I've got an example of that right here where I've done that and now you don't see the app. What you will see though is I do have a button over here on the right that says select a project to enable app to kind of give that user experience. You know that the button looks a little bit disabled. And now if I go ahead and I select, say, a record, it now appears as it's been in a, a button that's been enabled. You'll see the text change. Click to edit comments. I can click on here. Now the app has, uh, has appeared. And I can go ahead and I can, I can edit it. And then when I'm done, I can close this out. And there it is. And if I deselect it, again, the button gives that appearance. That is, it is now disabled, waiting for a record to be selected. So that's one option, and I will show how I did that. Very easy to do. Um, I'm actually going to show a second um, example as well. Setting these uh, um, up are essentially the same um, with just a slight variation, but let me go ahead and do that. In this case, you don't actually see any button here whatsoever. And if I go ahead and select a record, now the button actually appears. And if I Deselect it where I'm not selecting any records, it disappears. So, two different ways to do that. And let me show you because actually setting these up, it's pretty much the same, but does give you a little bit of um, perhaps a user experience that you might want to use in your own application. Let's jump over to Power BI Desktop and I'll show you really easily how this can be done. All right, so I moved over to the report in Power BI Desktop. Here is my first page. Again, here's my app over here but I'm gonna switch over to the page where I have um, uh, hidden the app and I'll show where that is. And I've also got, I have a button over here. So let's walk through how I set this up. First, let's dive into where the Power App itself is. And what I have is I've got my selection pane enabled here. If you don't know where that is uh, up here on view, go to selection, make sure it is enabled. I also have my bookmarks. A pane, a pane enabled because I will need that as well because I will be using a, a bookmarks for this. So what you'll see here is I've got this group called Power App Group. And let me expand it and let me go ahead and show that because right now it is not visible because I had that group hidden. So here it is. And what this is, this consists of really three items. The first one is this background. And what this is, is this is just a rectangular shape. I go over to the style, it's, I give it a gray color, I give it about a 50% transparency to give that, um, that look so that the app um, really stands out. Great way to, 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 make, to do that. 
The next one is I have my actual power app. That's the visual here. And then I've added a close button. And then I've just selected all these. I've created a group because now I can go in and create bookmarks to show and hide that. And all the bookmarks do is if I hit show the panel, this is this group is visible. And if I hide the panel, the group is gone. So great way to show and hide that power app. And of course, give that that look that it, it stands out by having that grayed out, that transparent background. So that's the first thing I did. I went ahead and created that, created the bookmarks to show and hide the panel. The next step now is I just need a button. So I went ahead and I added a button. And what I wanted to do is give the appearance that it, and as well as the text, to give some instructions to the user so that when, it's, when there are no records selected, so you're, you're viewing the whole table, because in my case, I want the app to only apply to one specific record because we are editing that one record. So if I click on it, the font changes, you'll notice that the text changes as well as the color. So that is very easy to do. Jump over to the measures and let's go ahead and enable this button. So uh, we move over to the style here. Let's go ahead and hide these because we don't need them anymore. First thing we do, let's, let's do the text. So you'll notice the text, if I deselect it, it says select a project to enable app. And when, it's, when I do select a record, it'll say click on edit comments. Now real quick, if I actually select on multiple, it gives that sort of appearance as well that it's, um, it switches back. So only want this to happen on one record. So what I, I do here is if I click on the button, the text and what I'm actually doing is I'm actually going to use a measure. So I've got the measure created here. I call it button text. And all I'm doing is basically counting up the number of rows in my table. This project list is my table here. When it is re one record, there's my text. And when it is not one record, so anything else, I, get, I have the text here. So that's how I'm changing the text. And then all I'm doing here is I'm doing the conditional formatting, which, which is the button right here. Choose field value, and then I'm choosing the measure button text that I created. So what I do here, I'll just cancel that. Let's talk about the color, because what you'll see is the color has this more grayish look in there. And the easy way to do that is I have a second button text color, and this one is what I'm doing is, there's actually a couple of different ways to do this. In my case, same approach, how many rows are selected. If uh, only one record is selected, I'm gonna choose my, I'm gonna have my font color in black. And then the second one is I'm actually doing, um, uh, I'm actually adding, this is the, uh, a black, this is the hex code for black, zero, zero. It's the first, I'm going highlight this. These, six characters are actually the hex code for the color black. I've added five zero, which is 50. Anytime when you add two, when you add numbers after this, oops, let me jump back, jump back to the measure here. This actually adds a transparency factor. So what I'm actually saying is take the color black, but add a transparency um, percentage of 50%. If I actually make this zero zero, which I will go ahead and do, it will actually make it disappear. You'll see that it disappears entirely. We're actually going to do that in the next example. But all I've done is I make it 50. Now, the other thing I could have done is chosen a different color, like, you know, I could have done gray. I think um, I'm, you know, could have changed this to gray. I'm just using the transparency effect, giving it a little bit of a transparency effect to give that appearance that the button needs some action or it's disabled. It actually still is a valid button. If I click on it, um, it'll still work, but it just gives that appearance. So again, all I've done is two measures, button text to change the text. And then here in this case, I'm using the, um, I have another measure to change the color and I'm actually using that for both. I believe I'm using it for both. The border. I'm using that for my border color. That's the same button here. So that gives that border color um, as well as the text color over here. So I have, font, I have font color, which uses that same 
So the font color and the border color are changing the same. So that's the first way, really easy way to um, change how your button looks depending on um, how many records you have selected. Let's jump over now to my other example, which is where I actually make the button disappear or appear to disappear. Because if I hover over where the button is, it's actually still there. Let's go ahead and select it. And again, this is where the transparent um, code comes into play as well. But it's pretty much the same approach. So if I select that button, you'll see, uh, let's go over to the font color of the button here. If I have one record selected, I have the font is white. If I deselect it, so let's go ahead and select on that measure. And the measure I'm using for the font color is this measure called button color. And if I go over to that measure here, again, very sim uh, same approach. If one record has been selected, make the font color white. If not, what again, what I'm doing is I'm adding this zero zero for the to make the um, the font color fully transparent. And again, this this hex code is irrelevant. Um, one other thing I will mention in my case, um, I could use the same color that's the background. The problem I have in my situation is I've got a background that has multiple colors. So if I if I if I had the button say over here, I can't make the font match the, the background color because I have various colors. So what I'm doing is let's jump back to that measure is I'm taking any hex code. Again, your hex codes are going to be the first six digits and I'm adding these the zero zero at the end is the transparency factor. And I'm doing zero zero, which makes it 100% transparent. So I can use any hex code I want here, irrelevant. And I don't even know why I grabbed that one right there. <coughs> so that's the, uh, that was the approach I used with the font color. But you'll also notice I have a fill color of purple, this, this sort of purple color. And they're same exact thing. I've got a measure a button fill. That is this color here is this purple color. And you'll notice I used the same hex code at it zero zero. And it will let's go over to that button. Go to the fill. And there it is. I'm using the button fill. This measure here. And again, I'm using that transparency factor of 100. To show you, let's make this. 50, so this would be 50% transparent. I need to select away, and you'll see there's 50% transparent. So, and it would not work because I, I can't, I want to use the transparency because I have multiple colors in my background. So I will move that back, make it fully transparent, and now the button disappears. Now, one thing I might have uh, missed, and to make sure I catch that, is in the button itself, all I did was go into the action, add the bookmark to show the panel. So as you click on it, there it is. Here's the other button. If I select that. The action is to hide the panel. And there you go. Show it and hide it. And again, same situation with this one. If I click on this button, it's the same action to show. And then, of course, it brings up the same one. And actually in my case, but I just realized my bookmarks, it's actually sending me to the other bookmark, which I would have fixed that, but same concept. And hopefully that makes sense. So that's it. I mean, that's a great way to show or hide a power app, as well as, um, you know, uh, changing how your buttons appear, depending on what your, your situation and your user experience. So I hope you found this helpful. I'm going to continue uh, doing more videos with integrating Power BI with other applications. So if you like this, please hit the like button and please subscribe. And thank you for watching.